And is this on? Can you hear me great? Awesome. I'm going to ask my friend Nathan if he has a dollar. Nathan, do you have a single dollar bill? Why don't you bring it up here for a second? I find that this illustration will probably be more impactful, especially to Nathan, than to the rest of anyone else, but more impactful than most of the talk. So Nathan, I want you to give me that dollar, and I'm going to give you five. You willing to make that trade? I'm willing to make that trade. Here you go. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, Steve, Steve's now ready. He wanted to see it work for real before he got up with his money. But here's the deal, right? How many of you would make that trade? Show of hands. Okay, some of you are liars because you'd be like, well, there's a, there's a catch. I don't know what the catch is, but I'm not going to do it. So I'm just going to stand here and act like I would do it, but I'm not going to do it because I'm not willing to lose my dollar, right? And it turns out a lot of people do that. In terms of most studies that are done on college campuses where they ask, how much would I have to give you to swap for a dollar? Like if I give you $2, would you give me a dollar, right? And uh, what happens if I flip a coin, if you get a heads or tails? If I, if each time you get your heads versus my you know, tails, I'll pay you twice the amount of what you'd pay me. And it just goes on and on where people are like, no, I'm not willing to do the deal until you get to that five to one ratio, right? So we're risk averse. That's what most of us are. That's just, that's just a known fact. We're risk averse. And yet, that kind of deal where I give you five for every one dollar is kind of a no-brainer. It's kind of a no-brainer. And what I want to spend the next 30 to 40 minutes doing is walking you through other no-brainers where you can take what you normally make online if you're running an online store and just make more money. You go, seriously? Like, this now sounds like an infomercial. I want you to make more money and you have to barely do any work and none of it requires you giving me any of your money. But the reality is you have customers who instead of giving you $5 are giving you $1. And you could do just a few little things to push that average order volume up and that's what we're going to spend our time talking about. Does that make sense? All right. I know you just had lunch. You're a little tired, but this is going to be interactive. So let's get into it. All right. How many of you have heard about cart abandonment? Right? Yeah. It turns out the stat that most people know is that 70% of the carts initiated online, right? You put something in your cart, 70% are never brought to completion, right? So seven out of 10 people put something in a cart and then they get distracted or they get uh, interrupted or they're just not sure, or the shipping price is too expensive, or they're not going to get it in the time that they wanted. And so what happens? They just go, oh, forget it. I'm not going to do it. Some of us put things in our cart really late at night. Any of you do that? Any of you willing to admit you do that, right? I'm only willing to admit it now because there's so many of you between my wife and me. Right? So I know that if she starts racing, you know, chasing up me up here, I know I got enough protection. The reality is I put a lot of things in my cart late at night. Right? You lay in bed or it's late and you're just sitting on the couch and you start browsing something. You go, I should get that. And then you, there's a tiny little voice that goes, maybe you shouldn't. So you just leave it in your cart. And unfortunately, what happens? Right? That shows up as cart abandonment to most store owners. Seven out of ten people don't do it. But what if I were to tell you that we are causing our own problem. What if I were to tell you that the store owner, the store developer, the store designer is contributing to the problem? That's something we could control, right? So here's the dynamic, right? Someone views a product, they add it to their cart, and then they leave. And you go, that just doesn't seem like the right order of operations. I want them to add it to the cart, go to checkout, and pay. So what's going on, right? Well, I want you to take a look at this site, right? If you see on the screen here, this is Magna Tiles. And Magna Tiles has this beautiful little thing right over here, right? I think maybe I have to point over here. Apply coupon, right? You see that big apply coupon? That button is a call to action. Apply coupon. 
How many of you have ever seen an apply coupon button on your cart or checkout page? Yeah. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Right? This is Miss Jones baking. You put vanilla cake in a cup, which I don't know what vanilla cake in a cup is, but it sounds like something I should try. <laughs> vanilla cake in, a cake, cake in a cup, right? You put it in your cart, and what do you get? Oh, another uh, apply coupon. Right? Big button. Right here. Put your coupon in. Now, how many of you have a coupon for Miss Jones? Uh-uh, no, right? So, so what do we do? Oh, you mean you leave the site? And you go to Google? And you start typing in stuff in Google, like coupon code for cupcake in a cup? And then all of a sudden it's like, do you want cupcakes by the dozens? And you're like, what? Subscription to cupcakes weekly? And you're like, huh? And all of a sudden you're browsing other sites, and guess what? You never checked out at Mrs. Jones, Right? You view the product, you add the cart, and you leave. Why? Because we're looking for coupon codes. And that's what everyone's doing. They're looking for coupon codes, and because they're looking, you sent them away. You're the one that did it, or the designer, or the developer, or the store owner. We created the situation, right? Now, take a look at Nike. This is Nike's checkout. Now, if you take a look, you see, hey, free shipping for members. That's a nice little deal. It reminds you to log in. Over here, you have the product. You have two buttons that are highlighted, right? Checkout and PayPal. Those are the buttons. Now, the truth is, there is a coupon code area there. Do you see it? Do you have a promo code? But it's written in the same area as subtotal, estimated shipping handling, estimated tax. It's just a line of text. And in fact, you have to click a little drop down for it to pop up and show you the code. It does not distract you. In fact, most of the time, if you were looking at these shoes like I was looking at it late at night, you get to this step and then you're like, uh, check out or PayPal. PayPal is even better. It's fake money. It's not even my money. <laughs> right? Somebody paid me in PayPal, I have PayPal money. So those are like free shoes. I don't even have to tell Melissa that I spent any money. It doesn't hit our books. I just get a new set of shoes, right? How do you think I got these? Okay, so you click a button. You click a button and boom, there goes the shoe. And you're like, this is awesome, this is great. Why? Because they didn't put a big button on the cart or checkout page that said, hey, do you happen to have a coupon to get a discount? And we went, no, let's go Google it. Okay? It's not the coupons are bad. It's how we implement them. And so the first thing we want to talk about today, right, the first highlight I want to show you is how to navigate this in a better way. Does that sound good? Awesome. Okay, so here is the WooCommerce settings screen. And on this screen, you'll see two options that say hide on cart page and hide on checkout page. There are actual options. And you can say, uh, that button that Chris was showing me on all our WooCommerce stores, how do I, how do I hide it? Two little checkboxes. But you're gonna go, wait a minute, those checkboxes aren't in WooCommerce. I don't see them in the settings page. I've never seen those before. You're right. You need to add an extension to make that available. But what's nice is the same extension that does that also lets you create URL coupons, okay? URL coupons are coupons you define in the same way, 10% off, 15% off, 20% off, whatever. You define the URL, you take that URL and you send it to those customers, you mail it to people. We'll show you lots of other options you could do with them. But when the URL is clicked, when people are doing something, then they get the coupon applied. Still no need for the coupon box, right? This is URL coupons, and it gives you that ability, right? So here it is, URL coupons. For a single site, it's $49. Now, some of you go, $49, that's a lot of money to spend for this one little feature. Sure, but that's not the way you need to evaluate the decision, right? You evaluate the decision by how often am I sending people away from my site? How might you do that? Well, you could go into Google. From Google, you could go look at your checkout page, and you could look and see how many people are leaving and going to Google from your checkout page. 
that will quantify your lost sales. And then all of a sudden you'll be like, yeah, $49 is like, that's nothing. Does that make sense? Now, even better, even better than that are auto-applying discounts. How many of you are old enough to remember when cell phones had daytime rates, evening rates, and weekend rates? Am I the only one? No, there's a few of you. Yeah. Okay? And here's the dynamic, right? When you bought a cell phone in those days, right? When you bought a phone in those days, what happened was you were always worried about what time you were going to make the call, but also you'd have overage fees, you'd have, you know, the rates would change, and then you'd have to try and negotiate with the carrier if you didn't want to pay a bigger bill, and you had all these things, and then sometimes you wouldn't use all the minutes, and you were like, hey, if I'm not using, if I, if I basically, you know, no longer needed the plan that I'd been on, and I started using less, why wouldn't you just automatically move me to a lower plan so I could pay less? If you ever voice that out loud, the person, the teenager working on the other side of the desk would just laugh out loud, right? Like, we're never gonna give you a better rate just because you're not using the plan you signed up for. We're just gonna keep charging you, duh, right? Now, some of you are like, I'm not that old, right? I don't remember what you're talking about at all. But some of you even are young enough to go to a gym, or I should correct that, buy a gym membership, right? How many of you have bought a gym membership in January and never seen it the 11 months after that? You don't have to raise your hand. I can just tell. <laughs> the reality is, right, we do those things where we're like, hey, I haven't used it in 11 months. Why don't you just give me, a, 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 give me my money back? Like, I haven't even walked in the door. And they're like, no, never. I'm going to charge you the full amount of whatever contract you signed. But wouldn't it be great if they gave us the discount that we deserved? Wouldn't it be great if they adjusted my rate based on what we were using? So you go, well, I would love to do that on my store, right? So how do I do it, right? In this particular example, you'll see I put something in the cart. And when I put something in the cart, it shows me, hey, you're a first-time buyer. So I have given you 15% off. Just want to thank you for being a great customer, especially it's your first time at my store. Now, some of you have seen first-time buyer discounts, but you've seen them differently, right? You show up on a website, you just got there two seconds in, and things are like popping up, like, give me your email, and then I'll give you 10% off, and did it. And you're like, no, I'd prefer not to name our children before our first date, right? You're not ready for that relationship. I'm not giving you my email yet, but they're like, just anything to give you that 10% discount. Here, you could just say, look, it's your first time here. It's your first time buying something. You've never purchased anything before. I'm going to automatically give you a discount. How do you do that? Well, there is a product called WooCommerce Discount Rules Pro. And Discount Rules Pro lets you say, hey, I'm going to name this my new customer 15% discount. It's first purchase, 15% off, right? And then we're going to go into it, and you're going to say, hey, uh, I, that checkbox says, I don't want this to apply for items on sale, right? So that's fair. And then over here, purchase history. Number of pre previous orders are less than or equal to zero, and the order status should be completed. What it's saying is, go look at the orders for this person's email, check to see if in the completed scenario, there are more than one. And if so, this is not a new customer, do not automatically apply this discount. Does that make sense? Here you can say, okay, I want 15%. It could be 10%, it could be 12%, it could be whatever you like. Okay, but what if I want to go further, right? What if I want to use an approach that is like, hey, buy one, get one free? Or particularly, the better strategy would be buy three, get one free. And you go, wait, why is that better? Well, because once you put one in your cart, I can engage you to put a second one in because the third one will be free, right? And I'm actually driving your volume up again, right? That's what I want, is I want your cart value to go up. So I say, heads up, you got one in. If you put a second one in, your third, which is another one in, your third will be free, right? So there's a little bit of psychology to it, but what I really want is the discount to automatically apply. And what I want beyond that is I want the discount to apply while always choosing the cheapest product to be set to zero, right? 
I don't want you to buy a $7 item, an $8 item, and a $15 item and give you the $15 discount. I want to get seven, eight, 15, and then give you the $7 item for free. The same tool, the same plugin, right, will let you do that. So you come in and you say, okay, I want to do the buy two, get one free, right? This is going to be a uh, buy one, get one rule, right? So the BOGO that you see there, quantity, category, product, user role is what we're talking about. When we get into the actual conditioning, we go, okay, I want you to check across the count of all my items because that's part of what I'm doing. I'm looking aggregate across the cart. And then uh, on the next one, you'll see I want to do the min quantity three, the max quantity five. So I'm saying, hey, when we get to three and all the way up through five, when we get to three is when we trigger this use where I look for the cheapest one, right? And I give 100% discount on the cheapest one. And that's how I get the discount to automatically apply in both the cart and the checkout. Does that make sense? Right? This is discount rules for WooCommerce, right? Pro, again, $39. If you take people who average, on an average cart, have a single item, and you move them to put a second or a third in their cart, you can double or triple the quantity in the cart, double, double or triple the average order value, we have customers at Liquid Web where I work where we've helped them implement this and we've seen all their average orders go up, right? And you go, this is awesome. And it's just because no one's leaving the site for a coupon code. They're just getting them auto-apply, okay? Now, the problem with auto-applied coupons is people don't know them. If you show up to a site and you put one t-shirt in your cart and then you put another t-shirt in your cart, you don't know that the third t-shirt is the magic one that gets you the free one, right? There's nothing that tells you that. And so we have to educate people, we have to motivate people, and that's what we have to do because now we've hidden that discount code and now we've said, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply it in the cart or checkout. I need to do it long before you get to cart or checkout, right? So here's a sample store, right? It's the uh, store that has all WordCamp t-shirts. Right? This is an only Orange County, of course. So these are WordCamp Orange County t-shirts. And what you'll see is, hey, if someone puts this item in the cart, right? And you can see that across the top. This has been added to your cart. And then you see this pop-up that comes up and says, hey, way to go. You added something to your cart. You added a t-shirt. I just want to let you know, if you add a second, your third is free. Right? And I can use did you know language. I can use great news language. I can use lots of language that drives you to make another purchase. I can just leave it as a notification, or I can put a button on the bottom of that, right? And on the button, I can say, hey, go shopping, or go look at this category, or go look. I can send you anywhere I want. Does that make sense? Right? The tool I'm using there is a tool called Ahoy. And Ahoy has a variety of settings. You'll see here. Right? I can say, trigger this based on add to cart. Now, the thing I like about Ahoy is that it has tons of WooCommerce-specific monitoring, right? or tons of WooCommerce-specific triggers that can be used. And so you go, oh, yeah, when someone adds it, which is what logically makes sense, right? You put something in the cart, and this thing goes, oh, let me check to see how many are in the cart. Oh, it was the first item in the cart? Great, now I want to start the messaging to say, you put one in, if you put a second, your third is free, right? So I can say, yeah, I want you to trigger it based on adding to cart. Then I can go into the call to action, and remember I said, it could be a button, it could be a link, it could just be a notification, right? So we get that option, and then, right, we can define what are the other conditions in the cart. Now see here, you'll see, is cart item count more than zero, less than three? So I want this to pop up when the count in the cart is at a certain range, right? But that is cart item count is only one of all the options, right? I can look at cart totals, how much the customer has spent, what items the customer has purchased. It just goes on. I mean, that, that drop-down list has 20, 30 items in it that you can scroll through, right? So all of that helps me trigger it. That is a product called Ahoy. It's at a URL called Use Ahoy, right? So it's not, you can't just type ahoy.com. Um, and the beautiful thing is there is a discount going on right now. If you use Ahoy Lemma, you'll get, uh, 
think you get 20% off, right? Um, so now we say, okay, we viewed the product, we added it to cart, we auto added a coupon, and then they go to checkout, right? And you go, okay, by using the right coupons, by using the right approach to coupons, we are driving the value up. But that is only one of the three strategies we're talking about today, right? It's coupons, it's order bumps, it's one-time offers, right? So all we've done is talk about how to do coupons the right way. That's it, right? So then we say, well, what is an order bump, right? How do we think about an order bump? Well, we have all experienced order bumps all the time. How many of you have ever gone to a grocery store? I'm trying to figure out how the rest of you eat. Is it seriously all Uber Eats? You're just like, oh, just bring me more food to my house, right? So if you go to the checkout stand, it looks like this, right? And this is all, every one of these things, even if you don't believe me, all these items are non-essential items. Not one of these things is a, oh, I went to the supermarket to buy this. This is all extra, right? Nobody's like, I need to get another magazine. I'm, take me to the supermarket. No one's like, hey, I need to get more candy. Take me to the supermarket, right? No, 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 no. I'm just not believing it. You go to the grocery store to buy other food, and then you get to the checkout stand. And what happens when you get to the checkout stand? You're presented with order bumps. You're presented with, oh, by the way, I know you probably weren't thinking about it, but do you also want a candy bar? Right? Oh, by the way, while you're standing in line, do you also want this magazine? Oh, by the way, while you're here, do you want to buy a DVD? And you're like, no, I, I, no I'm good, right? But I want you to do this the next time you're at the grocery store and you're standing in line. I want you to watch the people in front of you and behind you and see how many people actually grab something. Or worse, for those of us that are parents, how many have our children grab things and you have to decide if that's the fight you want to fight right then. And most of the time we're like, no, forget it. Just here, just put it on the, right? Because we're like, no, it's just too much hassle to have that fight. These are order bumps. They're things that you don't necessarily need. You didn't start by saying, I need to go buy this. But yeah, they make sense. They're cool. That's a good idea. Okay, I'll throw it in. It's, they don't even, no one sells this to you, right? When you're at the cashier, the cashier doesn't say, oh, by the way, do you want a candy bar behind you? They don't have to say a word. They're just there, right? So imagine if I was going to my store and I'd already put three WordCamp t-shirts in, OC 2015, 16, and 17. Like, cool. On this, sample so on this sample site, the 18 shirt, right, the one with the dragon, it wasn't even there. It's not on the, it, oh, but wait a second, right? I have an order bump. It says, yes, I want the limited edition 2018 t-shirt. It says, yeah, oh my gosh, it's only $2.99. Check this out. I got to do it. And you go, it's right there in my cart. I mean, it's not even the cart. It's a checkout, right? It's right there at checkout. And it's very inexpensive compared to the rest. So you say, oh, yeah, you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm looking at a cart full of stuff. I have the different t-shirts. Of course, yeah, for, okay, just all I'm doing is checking the box. That's an order bump. That's a, I didn't necessarily need it, but sure. I was having, uh, I, was, I was smoking cigars and hanging out and having drinks. My friend Robbie from Beaver Builder just last night, and we were, we were chatting about order bumps. And I said, well, of course you could do an order bump, right, with Beaver Builder. If someone's buying the product, and then you could sell them a PDF, right? Here's a 10-page document or 20-page document on the most common mistakes or the best uh, tricks for getting started or going faster, right? A PDF, if I'm spending $99 or $199 and I have a $5 PDF, who doesn't check that box, you think, if there's a chance something in this is valuable for $5, yeah, yeah, just check the box. And all of a sudden, you're like, wow, we're making more money per transaction. Now, I'm not saying create a worthless PDF. I, I'm saying you need to create value. But when the value dynamic is inexpensive in comparison to what people are buying, 
This decision is a non-decision. Does that make sense? Okay. So how do we do it? Well, we use a product called cart flows, and cart flows allows you to go in and define order bumps, right? Cart flows is the product that everybody who's ever used WooCommerce wanted without knowing the exact name of it and not knowing how to explain it. And so every de designer and every developer and every agency they worked with would say, well, here, let me show you how to use click funnels. And then we'll do click funnels and then we'll bring them over to your cart because all the funnel work they were doing was somewhere else. And Cartflow said, well, uh, you know, we can, we can probably do the funnels right here in WooCommerce. And that's what they did. And one of the features they created is this order bump feature. And you can go in and define which product's going to show up, and you can define the images, you can define the title, you can define the price, you can define everything for that little box. You can style it too, right? You don't have to be a programmer to go in and say, change these colors and do this stuff, right? You can define order bumps very easily, okay? Here's the trick, though. If you're going to create an order bump, the general rule of thumb is keep it under 20%. If you can pull it off, keep it under 10%. But 20% statistically seems to be the place where research from Monetate, research from a couple other places tells us, hey, the non-decision becomes a decision when it gets too expensive. Now, how many of you have one of the newer iPhones, right? So some of you spent a lot of money, right? $1,000 on a phone. Do you know why? You all bought cases? Some of you are saying, because I want to protect my phone. No, not when you're buying the new phone every year. So don't act like it's all about protection. No, why? Because the case was super cheap. In comparison to a $1,000 phone, a $20 case or a $10 case is essentially a free item. It's a no-brainer, right? You just say, oh, yeah, sure, I should probably get a case, right? And that's why if you go into the AT&T store, if you go into the Verizon store, if you go into the Apple store, they're happy to sell you accessories, right? Because it's a very small price in comparison to the price anchor that is the main product. Order bumps are non-decisions that people can quickly and easily decide on by clicking the checkbox if you define the right product and the right price. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, so the last one, right, is the one-time offers. This is where cart flows really shines, right? Because upsells work best after the transaction. What are upsells, right? Those accessories I was talking about, those are upsells, right? If you were buying an Apple computer, you bought a, a MacBook, and the MacBook, you go in and you start the process, and then it says, hey, do you want to upgrade your RAM? That's an upsell. Hey, do you want to upgrade your, your, drive, your hard drive space? That's an upsell, right? And we're clicking these little things. And again, compared to the big price of the computer, these little upgrades for $100 here and $200 there, not a big deal, right? So those are upsells. Upsells before you put the product in your cart can work. Upsells when you're in the cart. And you'll see that if you go to Amazon, you put something in your cart, and then Amazon shows you several people have also purchased this. Or you're buying one item of what should be a three item purchase. This is a bundle. You bought a camera. Aren't you going to need batteries? Don't you want another lens? Don't you want a tripod? Buy the full package, right? Upsells in your checkout also work. But the best ones are after you've made the interaction because you've already put in your card, you've already filled it in, you've already moved on. Honestly, you think you're done, right? So what happens is you come into something like this, and in card flows, you can say, hey, I want to add, after the checkout, I want to add an upsell, okay? And before the thank you, I want to add this upsell. And you go, okay, so what's that going to do? I'm going to put all my information into the cart. Remember we saw we had three items in the cart. There was a checkbox for the, for the uh, upsell we, or the, the um, order bump. We checked the box for the order bump. We hit complete order. And after we complete order, it takes us to another page, right? And instead of that page having the thank you, here's your order information, that's our thank you page, right? It inserts another step in the flow. In this particular case, it shows you the 2019 t-shirt 
and it gives you the yes or no. Now, of course, you would normally put a lot more text behind it. This was custom design. Did Robert design this, by the way? Yes? Okay, so you'd say, let me tell you a little about Robert, how amazing he is, the, you know, this is all this stuff, and by the way, we had a limited run on these shirts, and you're never gonna see it again, right? This, and by the way, this can be priced differently, but you're gonna give people a yes link and a no link, a yes option and a no option. No credit card fields, no address, no shipping, just a yes click and a no click. And what happens? Some of you click yes. Then you'll get to the thank you page, and the thank you page will show that you paid for this too, right? But you did not process this the same way. You did not evaluate it the same way. Some of you put things in your cart, and then you wait, and you go back and look at the cart, and you're making that decision, is this cheap enough that I don't have to explain this to my spouse? And if it is, maybe you push the button. And if it's not... Then you start talking to your spouse about, how, you know how I've always wanted those new pair of shoes, right? You start having the conversation so you can go back and hit submit. But there's a whole process. None of that applies to the one-time offer because the one-time offer is different. The one-time offer is after you finished everything. It's after you filled out the form. It's after you hit check out. It's after you hit complete. You're all done. And it says, oh, by the way, hey, just for you, just this one time, just maybe if you want, I just want to show you this one other thing. You can, all you have to do is click yes or no. How many of you have ever gone to your spouse or your best friend or your roommate and said, okay, seriously though, I gotta tell you about this deal. I mean, this deal was just an amazing, you start with a deal, right? I have a buddy of mine who will spend three months just looking for a coupon, right? So he can get 10% off on a stereo receiver and you're like, but you spent 30% of your time, right? He's like, yeah, but I, I got this great deal, right? When your one-time offers are great deals, what happens? People go, yes. And here's the beautiful thing, right? I was showing you this. This is, the, uh, this is the get the shirt. That's the yes, the no thanks. You have the two links here, right, for the product. But in reality, right, if we go back for a second, you'll see that at the bottom of this thing, you have this whole um, edit, edit the flow by adding another step. You don't have to be limited to just one step, right? You could say, hey, do you want this T-shirt? Special edition, but it's, you know, heads up, it, you know, it's, it's $19, right? When all the other dollars were 10, all the other T-shirts were 10, this is $19, it's a special edition. You only get one shot at this, right? And they say, yes. You go, do you want the golf edition hat that went with it? And then you're like, oh my God, yes, right? <laughs> you can keep going, or you can be like my friend Steve, who would be like, no, 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 I can't spend money. So what, what happens, right? You hit no. But just because you hit no doesn't mean the game's over. Because you can create another offer on the no flow, right? When someone hits no, you go, here's another step. Hey, totally get it. You don't want the 19 shirt because it's expensive, except, you know, we created a, nine, a 2019 um, uh, beanie, right? It's a red beanie, it's really awesome, and we only have 50 left, but if you want to, like, do you want that, right? It's another option, and people go, oh yeah, okay, but that's only 10 bucks? The 19, I, I don't want to swing the t-shirt, but the 10 bucks, and they hit yes on that. Now, you want to get crazy? You could ask them, well, hey, now that you got the beanie, right, I got to show you the wristbands that go with it, and you're like, oh my God, we can play this game all day long. Right Now, there is a limit to doing this, and so you want to manage that. But the point is, cart flows allows you to create all the steps in the world. Any steps, any amount of steps you want. Okay? This is cart flows. And there is a free edition that doesn't even cost you money that you can play with. Of course, I would recommend that you get the pro edition because you can do so much more. But there is a free one, so you just play with it. Try it out. Every single person that I have given this to, every single store that I have helped put this in place has made more money. But the reality is it's not about the tools and technologies, right? It's about the thinking behind it, understanding what's the right offers at the right times and putting that in front of people. So we've talked about or coupons. We've talked about order bumps. We've talked about one-time offers. They are all tools to drive your revenue. It's money you're leaving on the table 
And notice that none of this was stuff that I said, okay, here's all the code you have to put in your site. Here's all the stuff you have to type out. Here are the developers you're gonna have to hire. Any store owner, any store builder can put this, apply it, test it out, and start making more money. My name's Chris Lemma. I do work at Liquid Web. You can find me on Twitter at, at Chris Lemma. Thank you very much. Nice job. Thank you, sir. We got five minutes for questions. Hey, Chris. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, quick question regarding, I think it was cart flows. Um, it's interesting that what you can do with the, um, I guess, the post checkout, the yes, no. Yep. Is there a way to test it within cart flows so you know where you could really maximize it? Because you're going to get to a point where you saturate and probably piss off your customers. So is there a way to kind of track to see this is the best route to take? Yeah, so the question is, hey, if you're using something like cart flows and you're putting a lot of steps into the flow, is there a way for you to evaluate, you know, like how well it's working? So Cartflows has its own ability to tell you what's working, but you also have the ability to use Google Analytics, right? Because you're still doing this on pages. You're still able to define events. You're still able to do all. So if you have a person who just plays in the statistics game and is evaluating this, they can still do it. You're not changing anything to do that. Thanks for that great question. Questions? We have a couple over here. First of all, Liquid Blood is awesome. Had a server for 10 years. They've, they've helped me out a ton. So thank you for that. Um, question would be, uh, in the technical details of this, when does the credit card get charged? Does it get charged again? Does it get charged three times? Does it just happen in the end? When does the authorization happen? I'm just kind of curious about right. that. So the question is, when exactly does the credit card get charged? How does it play out, right? From what we've seen, uh, the credit card is charged the full amount, not the separate ones, is that right? Yeah, that's what, I, that's what we've seen. So it, it runs the full charge. So if you had three t-shirts in, you got one discounted off, then you added the bump, and then you finished and it went over, and then you had the one-time offer and you bought that, when you get to the thank you page, it'll say you actually spent $48, and that was a transaction that happens in your card. Yeah, right. Chris, thank you. Once again, you were amazing. My question <laughs> is, what is the number of times that you give them an extra bump up? So on an order bump, I would limit it to one bump, but I would not limit it to one universal bump. I would define different bumps for different products. So if I'm buying t-shirts, that's one thing. If I'm selling an online course, that's a different one. If I'm doing a membership, that's a different one. So think about your products. Your, your bump is a one, you don't want three bumps. You want one bump that is like a no-brainer decision. Then your one-time offer, you can do multiple, my favorite thing to do in the one-time offer is a subscription or a recurring revenue model, right? So what I was talking to Robbie about yesterday was sell Bieber Builder. Okay, there's your product. Have a order bump that is a PDF that teaches you how to do something or keeps you away. And then in your one-time offer, sell a subscription where you get three new templates a month if you sign up for this you know, membership. And every month you get billed and every month you get new stuff. Or you might do a one-time payment for a year-long thing, right? So subscription and recurring revenue models are fantastic as one-time offers. Because people can say no, but they're most excited in that moment to accelerate their, their goal, right? And if you can help someone accelerate to their destination, they'll pay you money for that. Yeah. So you showed at the beginning there like a 10% discount for a first-time shopper. Where in that flow do you collect their email address where you can compare it and make sure that they are indeed a first-time shopper? Same thing for abandoned carts. Like, how are you getting a unique identifier so that you can do that follow-up? Where in the it's, flow? It's part, it's part of the checkout. So WooCommerce gives you that ability to define in the same way that if you've played with WooCommerce before and you know that when you go to make a payment, uh, the shipping options are predicated on what you put in the, cons the customer side. So it's, it's that same dynamic. You're putting customer information, which includes email, right? And then location, which is going to affect your shipping options. The email is going to affect the discount rules. So you could outsmart it by giving someone else's email, but... Right, no, and this is, this is a different design element, different design approach. Yes, we have another one. Hey, um... The one-time offer thing, can you do multiple items on the page and 
have it pop up based on the dollar value of what they're buying? So the question is, on a one-time offer, can I trigger it based on, or can I change the rules based on what they're... Right. I'm sorry. If they buy three necklaces, um, can the necklace offer be pop up or the earring be pop up versus something else that does not deliver on to it at all? Yes. So uh, th there's multiple answers. Can you create multiple discount rules that are all buy one, get one free or versions of that BOGO uh, for different products? The answer is yes. Can you do it just on products? Sure. But you can also do it on product categories. So anything in that category, so if you're looking at necklaces, you can create the rule for the necklace. That's one part. The pop-up, which is, can you pop up and tell them that this is there, available, whatever? Yes, that's ahoy, that's different, but yes, you can do that too. All right. On category or quantity or anything else. One yeah. more. So if I'm selling a product that has supplies with it, and I wanna do a yes, no with a subscription for the supplies, and the person pushes the button no, could I then, would it make sense in your mind to then offer them maybe a three-month or a smaller version of that yearly subscription of supplies? So first of all, if you're asking me to build that for H-Wave, I could totally do it if you ask Steve. I'm not sure he can pull it off. But the <laughs> second part, the second part of that answer is absolutely. And in fact, it wouldn't, I wouldn't just offer a different length of a subscription. I would offer a different kind of subscription. So part of what happens is you say, hey, you might anchor with 12 months plus VIP treatment, a special phone line that you can call in and get support. But if that's too much and you say no, what about six months, no special line, but this is and way less. And people go, oh, given that you just anchored me on this high price, this lower price makes a lot of sense. Thank you. That's super helpful. All right. All right. And I, I think we're done. Yeah, I don't deserve this abuse, but big round of applause for Chris. Thank Lama. you.